The life of a salmon is difficult, to say the least. They rely on, on cold, clean water to get them from upper watersheds here in the Cascades all the way down to the ocean and back. And they have to traverse many obstacles now. But, you know, there's a lot more impacts that people aren't necessarily aware of as salmon make their way down and back. No matter how you, you know, think about climate change, what side of a political spectrum you're on, we all can kind of agree that things are changing. And if you've lived here long enough, you've seen those changes. You've seen re reduced flows in the summertime and the fall. You've seen warmer water temperatures, warmer air temperatures that, that end up warming our water further. And that has its impact. We've lost a lot of our flows in some of our streams that used to hold water throughout the year and now are dry for a good chunk of the year. And the worst case, obviously, would be a river with no salmon. But a, a river with no salmon is like this river without Yakima's on it. It's not really, it's not really the way that it was meant to be. So we are working with our partners, with our communities, to have a conversation about what role can, can each of us play in building resiliency to conditions that we know are coming. So we're pretty far up here on the North Fork TNOA. Uh, this is a really nice example of some of that cold, clear flowing water that we have even right now, which is pretty late season. And so up here in the headwaters, this is the coldest water that we have. And a lot of fish species are really sensitive to water temperature. Trying to protect and keep this water that's cold here as cold as we can all the way down the river system. The headwaters of the Tianue are entirely protected through the national forests that we're sitting in here in the Tianue Community Forest. And so it's really a question of how do we ensure that fish are able to access this habitat? And that's what we think about as we move downstream and we see changes in land use. We move from public lands to private lands. We move from forested lands to more open lands to lands that are being irrigated. And if we look downstream from us in the Tianue, down in the floodplain areas, there's a lot of irrigation happening. Uh, there's a long history of growing Timothy hay and other crops uh, in the Tianue River Basin. And those are really important for the local community, they're important for our economy, but that means a lot of water is being pulled out of the stream that otherwise would have been flowing in the river for the fish. And that's the Water Trust mission, is how do we address that scarcity? How do we work with the, the out of stream water uses that are leading to the scarcity of water, especially in the late season to restore flows? So do you know how the fish are doing or they haven't started yet? The Sanook are hanging out in the pools right now. Okay. The water to cool they off. And they're, they're gonna start spawning here in the next week or two. And cool. they had to get up there in the hot summer. Right. So if the flows had dried up or that check dam was still there blocking the way, they wouldn't be up in the pools right now getting ready to spawn. Well, it's my favorite part of the job is working with, with people. And I get to have these, these amazing conversations around a shared love for this resource. Well, we can't live without water. So do we not want the deer, the elk, the fish to live without their, you know, water. So we do transactions as landowners to keep this water in the stream. And, and so the, we will change the purpose of a water right from agricultural use to in-stream flow use. And that water then gets protected in the stream. We're out here in mid-September, a really crux period in the Tionway River system. And so today when you're out measuring stream flows, we were seeing that down towards the bottom of the system, we only had 10 to 12 CFS of flow. 
Uh, so not a whole lot of water is down there. Not a whole lot of habitat is available at those flows for the fish. But the counter is, if we think about if we didn't have the agreements we have in place, if we didn't have willing landowners who are, are working with us, the river in a year like this would likely be critically low. About 50% of this flow that's going by here right now is the result of transactions Washington Water Trust has done. And so there's water flowing in the Tanoa year round now, and that wasn't always the case. It's just stewardship. We're supposed to take care of the land. That's what it was created for us. The, the ocean, the mountains, the snow, the rain, the rivers, the fish, and the people. We're all part of the same community. And I think if, if we're gonna get to this next great place, us humans really need to understand that we have an important role and responsibility with respect to our relationship with that community. We generally struggle with the idea of thinking about it long term, thinking about our grandchildren, thinking about what we're leaving for them. And so this movement that we're seeing in people, sustainable thinking, thinking about the future, thinking about this earth that's more than just them, and thinking about their lives as some one small point in time and that there's a lot that has to follow us. That's a movement that I'm seeing across communities and it's a really beautiful thing. The idea of somebody giving something up now so that people can have it later.